Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office. Today we're having some fun. We're going to be building something for a change. And the reason is I've got the very last of the RetroNet devices. And this one I've earmarked to set to send to Peter Lee, aka Nostalgia Nerd. Um, a while back when I was sort of conceiving these ideas, I, you know, I, had, I, I sort of follow a few people on uh, Twitter and YouTube and I kind of thought, it's a few people I want to send these to who might enjoy them. And uh, Peter's one of those people. So I pinged him and uh, there you go. That's going to be winging his way to him. You can see it's not very well finished and it's been heavily thumbed. Um, uh, Brian, Power Crazy, kindly went through and tested all of these units and he made these the various labels for them and stuff and they're very cute um, and I never really got these are still kind of basically pre-production uh, prototypes I've never sort of really gone any further than that um, so yeah some of them look quite warm but you know I think that adds to it this isn't one of the fancy colors this is sort of the brown or I'm going to call it wood grain so what we're going to do there's a problem with the v1 uh, PCBs which you've maybe seen if you watch my videos so they kind of need a more specialist USB wire you can't just use one of the sort of standard well that's not even a standard thing but the one which goes you know depending on your computer if you've not got a, a 9 pin you've got a 25 way you've got to go from uh, this to a 25 adapter and it won't work um, just a, a slight pin misconfiguration but nothing no big deal but it just means these these units are a little bit fiddly so that I'm just going to make a, a wire for it because I don't want to send it to somebody I don't know if they've got PCB or sorry wiring skills soldering skills no PCB action here required um, so I just thought I'd just make the uh, lead today as the bits come in sorry for the rattliness if you can hear that I'm wearing a lot of nylon um, waterproof nylons uh, because uh, I found they're quite warm and uh, in this weather I need all the warmth I can get and I'm uh, that's it really. I've just got the heaters running, the, the sort of random outdoor exercise clothes I wear on, just like a shell suit. And um, hopefully you won't be able to hear it too much. I shall try not to rattle. So these are shells. These are shells for these components and I haven't tested them and I kind of hope they'll fit and they probably will. Not particularly high quality it seems, but then maybe high quality just doesn't exist anymore for certain uh, components like this. Now we know we're not going to need these screw things for a start to go on a retro net so I'm going to probably get rid of those now ah, because they look like they're going to be really difficult to get rid of because they're kind of riveted in. It's, oh, In fact before I do that I'm going to solder this edge up because once you pull those rivets out the front of this bloody shell is going to come off. So that I made more work already than I really wanted to do and I'm super super busy right now. This is, uh, this, you know, this is a video I really shouldn't be making. I, but I'm going to be um, so busy. If I don't do it now, it's just not going to get done. And if it doesn't get done, then nobody's going to have any fun with this retro net. And that's going to be even more sad, isn't it? I think that's uh, it will be a crime, practically a crime, not to do it. So all I'm doing is just running a bead of solder on the edge of this shell. And the idea being that you can then sort of seal the two edges together. You're basically brazing the two edges together so that hopefully they just won't flop apart as soon as I take those nuts out. Well, are they nuts or are they bolts? I guess they're bolts. Um, I've done this before and then it failed spectacularly. So I didn't do it quite right last time um, in a previous video, but that video was a long time ago and I'm hoping my skills have improved. Right, so that's now got a layer. We'll see if that falls apart or not. It wasn't too. It wasn't sort of difficult to actually do that anyway. Repair it afterwards, but ah, ah, just see if we can avoid it. That's all altogether. So I'm just ah, these just are not wanting to go. All right, I gotta go drill these out. One sec. Okay, saving grace. They were easy to uh, drill out, so that's real good. And there's a bit of extra solder on the face there, but let's see doesn't affect it it's perfect let's leave it at that I think that's enough work so we've got the pin out uh, here and thanks to David and Brian or Dave and Brian they've worked it out for me and uh, there was a long pro protracted video on the subject but basically on the retro net side you have pins one three and four to hook up 
on the PC side to 7, 2 and 3. And just to let you know if you're interested, the reason is of course I clicked the mirror on the uh, PCB design for that and accidentally mirrored this uh, port and that had the effect of flipping all of the pins to the wrong side. So traditionally instead of being 1, 3 and 4, I'm going to guess it would have been 1, uh, sorry, 5, 3 and 2. That would be a normal configuration. But don't worry about that. It's only for this. And this is like the last one. So what does it matter? It's never going to be an issue ever again. So I'm just going to put some solder on pins one. Just like that. One, three, and four. And those little solder buckets. They've got solder buckets, they're called on there. Um, you probably can't see those, but they're little cavities that are designed to nom up all the solder and fill up ready for when you've got some wire in. So that's that one done. And we've got the three, um, two and seven to do on these, and they're going to be on the top row. So one, two, three. There's the third one along there. Three. Hang on. Why am I doing three? I could do two. Should start at two. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And my soldering iron is looking filthy. Let's get that clean. Right. Now, I don't know what happened to my little metal clip helping hand things that are kind of useless for 99.9% .9 of the time. But I just don't have them and I miss them now. I miss them and I love them. They were mine. Right. Let's get our wires soldered on. So I've got this. Look at this actually before I just rush away and solder it on. It's basically a bit of mains cable with some braid over it. It was actually from a mains thing like a PC power supply and I chopped it out. And I had uh, envisioned, my idea was to put a bit of soldering um, MIG wire down it so you could flex it in any position you want. So you could have this in the back of your computer and the retro net sort of on the top in a nice sort of flexed cable and it would, it would stay whichever way you want. But uh, now I realise I don't uh, have my welder at my um, in my garage anymore so uh, I don't have any welding wire so I couldn't find anything that was quite sturdy enough to um, do the trick for me so alas that dream is foiled and I'll just have to uh, give it to um, Peter without that um, there you go so Ah, sugar. I'm doing a See, that's why. That's why you need the helping hands. And I'm glad I didn't zoom in to show you, but I am going to now because you've got to see the sort of hack job I've done here. Um, it's awful. I've done it bad. All right. I think I think that's okay. I think we'll you'll forgive me on that one. So that's the ground pin seven, and then I'm just going to do the pin three in black and the pin three and uh, pin two in red. Um, color. Colours don't really mean anything in this, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you're consistent with the actual wiring itself. Oh, that was a good technique. That was very good. Luckily I had the existing wire to lever, lever off lever. Hmm. So uh, yeah, um, so I don't suppose um, Nostalgia Nerd's gonna be watching this video, but I want to make it clear to him that this is just a um, a gift, a gift for a, a fellow enthusiast. It's not a, an endorsement, endorsement, and nor do I expect one. Um, because frankly, um, although there's quite a few of these in the world, I've not really uh, gone out actively to sort of sell them. Now, I'm I'm going to put this connector on so it's the same way up so if you see these they've got a fat end and a thin end they're both going to have the thin end down and the fat end up the reason being the idea is that it's going to be plugged into your back of your computer here so imagine this is your Atari ST or Amiga or whatever and then the retro net can sit on the top like that yeah so I want to make sure that it can uh, it can do that so I've got to make sure these uh, cables are oriented in that way Did you see how I said oriented that's the American way of saying orientated Aren't I a man of the world? She says. Let me zoom in again. It's zooming, constant zooming. There we go. Terrible, absolutely terrible. I think I might have even shorted something out there. I think it might be just bridging. It's definitely not bridging anymore, if it was. So we've got our other colors now. So we've got our pin three has to go to pin two here. So I'm just checking, pin three, 
no sorry, pin three on this side goes to pin four on this side. So that's pin four and then pin two. So that's going to be red and black. He said again without double checking. Measure once. So pre-fill in that solder bucket and tin in the wires will make your life so much easier. It will just sort of flow into place like a, um, a river that's burst its banks. So I might be uh, encouraged to make more of these. I certainly, I kind of, I've done a live video stream where I've sort of fixed out, ironed out the bug in it and I've actually simplified the design because now we've actually got quite a few in use. Um, we sort of discovered there were certain features that were useful and weren't useful and we're just removing the weren't useful ones. Um, so I'm just going to do the last final sanity check. You've got the big end on the right and the small end. So I've got here, my pin one is going to pin seven. Yes. My pin three is going to my pin two. Yes. And then my pin four is going to my pin three. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. Thank you again, Dave and Brian. That's uh, you've done a marvelous job. There it was a marvelous job. So the shell construction can continue and you can see you've got here some cable ties some little ickle cable ties there um that right where you kind of don't want them but let's just see what this sort of built-in strain relief they do come with these fitting kits because they have these things for letting you screw them into the back of the computers and all that stuff i probably um just off camera here i'm shaking this about you can't see it i'm probably thinking of omitting those i don't know it's worth just sort of trying to hold in all that clank, cling clangery stuff, but maybe just for uh, as a completionist, I'll do it. And I think um, a nostalgia nerd would like that. That's that would be expected, I think, from him um, because it's it's all computers back in the day would have had all those annoying sort of bits of metal clamped onto everything. So I'm just going to push this under my cable tie and try to find the right pieces again this cold this cold is getting into my fingertips and uh, while I'm doing that let me tell you a little bit about if you follow my tweets in the week I was playing with the flare unit that uh, Mr. Jared Rebo multi-rotor guy um, lent to me oh that was handy that that actually pushed the cable tie out my way a bit um, and uh, I was measuring the temperature because I was kind of thinking, why do your hands get cold? Because what was odd was, is that it it doesn't seem to be um, all just temperature because sometimes the temperature is fine. It's absolutely fine. So I was like, what's all that about? Right, so that's in there. I just noticed something though. When I pushed that in, that cable tie did move a lot and that's going to be bad news come on you focus you f f uh, ah come on come on come on come on why isn't it focusing this is a bad bad boy you've been a bad boy i think it's because it's so dark here anyway uh so what i'm just going to do is just get the soldering iron and just sort of dash that stuff a bit see if that'll just sort of rough it up so it won't slide out be a bit gentle with this then don't yank it pop a bit of glue on there if you want that'll stop it i could do that could I? No. Let's put it all together. Maybe I'll drab, do, dob a bit of resin on there later. Right. Get that in there. Look at that. That's a good fit anyway, isn't it? Gorgeous. So all these other bits, you see, you've got these nuts and you've got these two screws. You've got the sort of plain screws. They're the ones that go with those nuts. That's just for the housing. But then you've got these things and those were they're sort of captive screws and they're designed to be used to permanently fit this. Permanently fit your RetroNet into your uh, Atari ST or Amiga or whatever you've got. So uh, I don't think many people use it, but you can. It, it, it'll give you a good um, solid ground, you know, between these things. So oh, it get, that's a proper retro sound, that is. That's a proper classic sound that all cables make. You know, what? I'm actually glad I put them in now. 
I think when you hear it, you'll go, yeah. Oh, that rattle. That rattle brings it all back. Back to my uh, my youth uh, spent um, messing around with lap link cables. I don't really remember serial, maybe a serial cable from my Atari ST to a modem, but it was more of a, a lap link cable type experience, I think. Yeah, good. Right. Um, hmm. Do you remember my efforts to actually make sure that these things were, you know, a particular orientation? It turns out it doesn't matter because uh, I must have got a twist in there somehow anyway. So it's all gone to cock. <laughs> right, get that in there. Get that in there. Now this one, I don't know if I can fit it. It doesn't see it for a strain relief. It seems to have these sort of grommets of varying sizes. So we'll try the smallest ones first. And these are designed to sort of just pinch the wires. They fit inside and uh, pinch, grip, pinch, whatever adjective you want to describe uh, their function, but they do that anyway. So I've used the smallest one. And I'm just going to see if there's any chance that'll clamp down on it. Because you want to, you don't want to put in one that's too big. I think that'll work actually. That's pretty good. I mean, it's a bit, it's a little bit on the, uh, slightly <clears throat> in bigger inside I mean let me just try that real quick without anything I just sometimes the quality of certain things aren't great I mean these are a mouse of things so they should be okay but maybe it just that's the best you can achieve anyway even if there's no cable and the answer is yeah you can get it a bit more close so let's go on to the next size up Oof. Smell burning plastic in here. I wonder why. So we want that to be that way. Yeah, that's pretty good. Not that this part will make any difference for that. So you do have that uh, cable tie sitting in there, which might be uh, causing me some grief on this. If this one won't compress together, but again, yes, that is good open up this packet of fittings the fittings oh it's a nightmare come on it's so fiddly so fiddly I'm trying to think what stops these ones falling out actually it looks like if you put these screws in on this side it doesn't have the uh, captivating elements let's see Oh yeah, no, it does. The thread. It's, this one actually relies on the thread of the screw to keep it in. Um, but it's super tedious getting them in right now, so I think I'll just go for the actual main body fittings. Come on, come on. It's not biting. He's not biting. Now he is. Woo -hoo! So I hope you've been up to something interesting yourselves today. I've, uh, as I said, I'm super busy, super busy. And uh, sometimes your mind isn't in the right place though for the sort of thing that you've got to do. And that's tricky, right, to get motivated. So I think this is good. This is acting as a kind of a cathartic um, break from that sort of thought, the thoughts of what I need to do. And then because I'll have achieved this video, I'm more likely to uh, then go and crack on probably with one of the other jobs that's pressing jobs. One in. And that one in. I suppose I ought to test this in a real computer, hadn't I, before I uh, send this off. But just to show you how that fits, uh -huh. so that goes in the back like that. Boom, and if you're really keen, you could solve it. Look, it's massive with that. It's not the smallest uh, adapter in the world, but it is an adapter. And then you can just plug that into your computer like that, dock it in. Maybe you should paint these as well. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. So that's it, that's that's the adapter. That's the uh, retro net for Nostalgia Nerve. We're gonna fly its way there and uh, hopefully have some fun with it and um, maybe I'll try it out before before I uh, send it off give it its farewell go because it's that very last one as ever 
Thank you for watching. Just before I sign off here, I, uh, I think I'll do a little bit of testing and I have a guide here. This is it's produced for Commodore Amiga users by Skateman1972 on Twitter. And it's a pretty good guide. Um, it's, it's actually really good. But, and it's got all of the kind of Amiga settings uh, and things to use. But a lot of it is, is pretty standard across most systems actually. So it's pretty generic. And you've even got a picture of the little wiring, wiring mod that needs to be done. So I think I'll just, uh, I've got my Atari ST here all set up. And look, it's actually all plugged in with a nice pink wire. Uh, on the screen to my right is the actual output. So I'll, I'll have a little go in the guide. Here we are. Atari ST, RetroNet and the power lead, the moment of truth. Three, two, one, in it goes. Come on, Wi-Fi connected, hooray! And we've got our IP. And that's the way you do it for the rest of the RetroNet malarkey. Another video, I think. Bye-bye. <laughs>